Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Dubro 101. Today we're going to be talking about some best practices for mounting servos in your RC vehicle. And that's a pretty wide topic, so we're going to narrow it down and focus in on those applications where you use the built-in mounting lugs that are on a servo. And when I talk about these things, I tend to speak in terms of model airplanes, but the techniques that we'll be discussing can be applied to airplanes, helicopters, boats, cars, basically any RC vehicle that uses a servo. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to cover is installing the mounting hardware that is included with the servo. And when you're talking about servos that are mini sized or larger, that mounting hardware almost always includes a rubber isolator. And these isolators are intended to isolate the servo from vibrations that could be caused by an internal combustion engine on the model. And even if your model isn't powered with a glow or a gas engine, I still recommend using the isolators simply because they are a very robust and secure way to mount the servo. Now these rubber pieces are meant to be pushed into place on the mounting lugs of the servo and sometimes they're symmetrical and it doesn't matter which orientation you install them on the lugs. Other times, such as with this high-tech servo, the isolators are not symmetrical and they must be placed in a specific way. So make sure you take your time and install these isolators correctly. The next part is where people sometimes get things backwards. There are brass grommets that have a flange on one end and these grommets are intended to be inserted into the rubber isolators. Sometimes people will insert these grommets into the top so that the flange is between the screw head and the rubber isolator. That's incorrect. The flange should be on the bottom so that it ends up between the isolator and the mounting surface of the model. And when mounted this way, the flange prevents the grommet from digging into the model's mounting surface as the mounting screw is tightened. And that ensures that when everything is assembled, there's the correct amount of tension on the isolators for them to do their job of isolating the servo from vibration. Now that the servo is assembled, it's time to install it in your model. And most of the time, that means attaching the servo to a servo tray that is made of either light ply or maybe hardwood rails. And for our example here, we'll be using a piece of light ply. So we simply drop the servo into place and move it into position. And once you have the servo where you want it, you need to ask yourself three questions. First of all, is the servo tray robust enough to support the servo securely? Next, is there enough material underneath the servo's mounting tabs so that you can drill the necessary mounting holes for the servo? And lastly, will you be able to insert the mounting screws without fear of the wood beneath the servo splitting? If you can't answer yes to all three of those questions, make the necessary modifications to the servo tray before you move forward. Now it's time to mark the locations of the mounting holes for the servo. And this can actually be a little bit challenging because most pens and pencils can't fit through these brass grommets and reach through to make a mark on the servo tray. So what I like to do is use a mechanical pencil and extend the lead about a quarter of an inch. And this allows me to reach through the grommet to make the necessary marks. And I actually like to fill in the entire area at the bottom of the grommet. Now repeat this for all four locations, making sure that the servo does not move in between. Now we're going to drill the pilot holes for the mounting screws. And obviously you want the diameter of these holes to be a little bit smaller than the diameter of the screws. And in this case, I'll be using a 1 inch drill bit. And when drilling into light ply, I prefer to use a hand powered pin vise rather than a power drill. All you have to do is line up the drill bit on your mark and give it a little bit of a push down to help keep it from walking as you get started and then drill your hole. Now let's talk a little bit about mounting screws. The screws that are included with this servo are pretty standard. They're basically wood screws with Phillips heads. And most of the time, these are gonna work just fine. The only potential problem you could have is that these screws tend to be made of a softer metal, so you run a higher chance of stripping the head when installing or uninstalling a servo. If you'd like to upgrade from these screws, you can go with Dubro's socket head servo mounting screws. This Dubro screw has a hex head and it is meant to be used with our 564 ball end driver. And you can see that when the driver and the screw are engaged, it's actually a pretty snug fit. And this allows you to insert the screw into hard to reach locations. 
And also, because this is a ball driver, you can turn the screw from off-axis positions, and that can be handy from time to time as well. Next, I'm going to insert and remove a mounting screw into each of the pilot holes. This will cut female threads into the servo tray and also expand the holes to the correct size. It's a good idea to inspect each of the mounting holes and verify that there are no cracks in the wood. Everything looks good here. And with plywood servo trays such as this, I like to add a drop of thin CA adhesive into each of the mounting holes. This hardens the wood around the hole and gives the screw a firmer grip. Now we can place the servo back into the servo tray and secure it with the four mounting screws. And be sure not to over tighten the screws. I like to leave them a little bit loose at first until all screws are in and then tighten them all down at the end. And there we go. This servo is now fully installed so it's ready for a servo arm and then attachment to the rest of the control system. Of course, Dubro makes super strength control arms for most brands of servos. We also make control horns, easy links, quick links, ball links, push rods, pull pull systems, basically everything you need to set up the control system on your model. Be sure to check out Dubro.com for the complete lineup. I hope you found these tips useful and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes of Dubro 101. Thanks for watching.